Hello, hello, happy Wednesday. This is Carrie from Stampa CT. Thanks so much for being here with me today, whether you are catching the replay or whether you're able to join us for the live video. So glad you're here. I'll wait just a little bit to give some time for people to be able to hop on with us. Judy, hope you're doing well. Thanks for joining us at this different time today. And Jan is here, welcome. We've got um, a last minute gift idea for you guys. Hi Cindy, hope you're doing well. So glad you're here. I'll give just a few seconds to see if anyone else is able to join us live. Hello, Judy. <clears throat> I'm so glad that your Stampin' Up! box is gonna be on its way really soon. Hi, Mary. So we are going to go ahead and get started because we have a really cute um, idea for you today for a last minute gift and I say we because Dale is here with me and he's actually going to uh, do a little bit of the demonstration today so you guys are in for a treat. I always love when he's able to come and help me. So let's take care of giving away the prize from last week and if you will remember it was the awesome reversible ribbon that is Old Olive and Pretty Peacock. So our winner for last week's giveaway is Diana Hughes. So congratulations, Diana. We will get this ribbon in the mail to you, and I think you're gonna absolutely love it. So in case you are new to my videos, we are doing a giveaway every week, and all you have to do to be entered for a chance to win is leave a comment. So you can just let me know that this is your first time here, um, say hello, let us know where you're from, but we're so glad that you're here and part of um, kind of thanking you guys for your support as we're doing a, a giveaway each week. So um, I'm Carrie and I'm from Stamp with CT. My husband, Dale, um, is actually my supporting demonstrator through Stampin' Up! So he helps me so very much and I love that we're going to kind of do this little demonstration together. So be sure and leave a comment if you feel like one of your friends or relatives would enjoy this content. Hit that share button and let us know that you shared. We thank you very much. So let me show you our super cute projects. I'm really, really excited today. You know, you've got, what, 34, 36 hours before it's Christmas. So if you still have people on your list that you um, need a gift for, of course, you can always run out and grab a gift card, and that's really fun. We love to make gift card holders. People love getting gift cards, but they also love getting money, and we have a really cute way that you can gift money. Now, we have done this in the past in a class, but it's been two or three years ago, I think. So we're going to kind of bring it back, and I wanna give a shout out to my friend Donna Williams, who sent me a link to a video kind of reminding me about this origami um, money gift. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is just a super cute little project and it's very, very easy, but it's a fun and adorable way that you can gift someone money. So you could use, of course, any denomination of bill. And then I'll also show you how we made the little envelope. So this would of course be one that you would hand deliver. And then we also have this way to gift money. And we just thought it's a fun way to use up a little bit of supplies. It takes very minimal supplies. These are very quick and easy to do. Just a little bit of cardstock, a little bit of designer series paper. Almost all of us have a Merry Christmas stamp in our stash. So super, super easy to make these and they're lots of fun to gift. So, let's see, I think I will move out of the way. Which one do you wanna make first, Bill? Let's make the little one first. The little one? Okay, let me move this one over. 
and kind of get things situated so you can still see that, but also see what Dale is doing. Okay, I'll turn it over to Dale. The hard decision first is whether you want the green side to show or the, the, the gray side to show. I prefer green because it's a tree. What we're gonna do is take the bill and fold it in half and get us a nice, a nice crease in it. Keeping it nice and square. Unfold it. Fold it in half again. too far. No, you're fine. I just was going to move that so you have a little bit more room. Yes, thanks, Lisa. I think you may have been in the class when we did this the last time, but again, it's been a couple years, so. And What's no. great about having it on a video is you can stop and start, but you can always send us any questions that you have. Sorry, Bill. That's all right. Um, you want to make sure that you keep your creases really tight and that's your because that determines your fold lines and so you're from this center crease to this center crease you're folding across and and getting the diagonal in and once you get one of them folded in it sure helps get it nice and Yeah, doing it nice and tight using your bone folder is definitely a good tip. And then fold this back on the center line to make it point. And then fold it back over so that it's out of the way so nobody knows that it's back there. And then we're going to repeat this all the way around. So we're going to Hold that in the corner there, get it nice and crisp and clean. Use our bone folder. Fold it back on the center line. And then fold the part that will stick out back in. And it doesn't have to be as clean on the back side because if they return their present, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I know one of our trees is just a little bit wonky, but Dale didn't think that anyone would um, have a problem with that. And all trees in nature are not perfect, so. And this really is easy. What's interesting is we did this, like I said, a couple years ago, but I still remembered it when I started to work with the money again. It all came back. Then the last diagonal. Get this up here so you can see it. No not hide it from you. We like the crispy ones. Yeah, it does work better with crispy, doesn't it? And then back over again. Then you're gonna fold it together and then maybe go over it again with the bone folder a little bit to get it nice and nice and tight there. And then the next step is to take it and fold it back. And on this one you're gonna to have to work out the, the the bucket shape that you want on the bottom as, as to how much you fold it back. And then you'll fold that in place. 
get it to lay down nice and pretty for you. Bring it back up. Keeping that point in the middle. Crease it off. And you have a tree. Okay, bring that closer where they can see that that pretty much lines up with the other one that we did. Okay. So if you have questions, be sure and let us know. We'll be glad to help you with that. So we would love to have you give this a try. Now let's bring in the other card and we'll show you how to fold for that one. The, uh, once again, I like the green side, so. And you have three bills for this one. We're gonna start off by folding them in half so that we can keep everything nice and clean. And then we're gonna take and fold the top over a little bit at an angle. We're still trying to stay on that center line. And then we're gonna take this other one and fold it back over. Staying on the center line, and then we're gonna take the bottoms and fold them up. And what we're, all we're trying to do is to keep everything out of the way so that as, as we build our tree, the next bill will do the same. But on this one, we're gonna move out just a little bit from the center. So that it, as the tree gets wider toward the bottom. Be sure and use the bone folder. Uh. <laughs> it's one of our favorite tools. Those heads, they, they give me a problem because they're, the dollars are not symmetrical. Well, it works though. And we'll fold those back up. And because I've got this one folded a little bit different, we'll need to fold this end back in. Kind of hide it. Kind of hide it from view so that we keep our nice tree shape. And then it will tuck in nicely. Once again, we'll do the same with this one. We'll, we'll move out just a little bit further. the side up bring those corners back right there so that they're out of the way crease it down so that it lays down nice and pretty and we'll insert that in the opening there and we should have a Bring it down just a little bit and you can bring this back in too. Okay. They're loving it. And then 
Okay, we're, you. we're trading places again. <laughs> okay. So now that we have the money folded, just thought I would show you really quick how simple it is to do the little envelope. Let me move some things out of the way for a second and bring my paper trimmer in. So our Whisper White envelopes are just awesome. They're great for stamping on. They're just such nice quality. And our Whisper White products are going to be changing soon to basic white. Um, I did post about this and send out an email, but the mill that Stampin' Up! has used to get our Whisper White products from for many years has had to close permanently because of impacts from this pandemic. So um, if you have the Whisper White envelopes, we are being told by Stampin' Up! that they are coming with the basic gray products. It'll come from a different mill, but they should still be very high quality, um, very comparable to our Whisper White. But basic white. So, basic white, I'm so sorry. Um, so where I, right now, I still have some Whisper White products though. That's what we're using as far as our cardstock. So I wanted to show you to make this cute little envelope. And again, this would be one more for delivering this, um, you know, in person. You couldn't really mail it like that, but um, you're just gonna take and close the flap. And I have a little tip for you. We have something called water painters. And these came out in our annual catalog back in June. And there are three different sizes. I tend to use this smaller one, but it goes three different sizes that you have. And um, this one really is a really nice large brush tip that you can use for coloring. But this is also a great tip, especially when you're doing multiple cards, or right now you really don't want to be um, licking the envelope to seal it. So just use your water painter to add a little bit of water across that adhesive to close that envelope up. Okay, so first we're gonna seal our envelope. I'm going to put it in the paper trimmer and I'm only cutting off about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I'm gonna use that darker cutting blade. So you can see that's just a tiny, tiny little piece that I'm taking off the end. And then I'm going to bring in my, um, this is what, inch and a quarter, inch and a half, one and a half inch circle punch. And I know I've shown you this before, but we have put the mark there where the halfway point is because a lot of times when we're making gift card holders, or something like this, you kind of want to know where the halfway mark is. And this is a super quick and easy way to be able to just to snip that little piece out about halfway. I didn't get that very centered, but you get the idea. And then we just took the ribbon and wrapped around. This is a very cute little um, like linen uh, thread in real red. I'm not sure though. This is one of the retiring products. I'm not sure if it's still available. So for the cards, we're just using a thick whisper white card base, eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. And then this is a piece that is five and a quarter by four of the Trimming the Town designer series paper. So any, um, you know, fun Christmas paper that you have would work. And then I love the Celebration Tidings stamp set. You've seen me use it a bunch. This Merry Christmas is such a beautiful sentiment, so that's what we chose to use today, just on a little stitch circle. So I just stamped that with real red. And so that is all you have to do is fold your money. What I did was adhered it down with glue dots. Just put probably about five or six glue dots behind this. So that's part of the reason why using the bone folder and having those really crisp folds helps. So you're just gonna place that. I'm not actually gonna put this one together, you guys. But you are just gonna place that where you want it using glue dots to adhere it. I just took a very small piece of early espresso cardstock, just a little scrap, and put a glue dot on it, slipped it under there, popped on my sentiment, and then I also have these really cute little glitter stars. And again, this is another item that is um, 
retiring, they come with the little hook on them and a piece of silver thread. But Dale was able to just take, what was it, like a wire snips? And he just snipped that off. So again, just added that star at the top with a glue dot. So let me go ahead and bring in those two cards again for you. So you can see the two different ways that you can fold the money to make a super cute gift for someone. So if you need that last minute gift, we hope this helps. And again, if you have any questions, let us know. We'll be glad to help you. Um, it's getting down to crunch time, so hope that you have all of your shopping done. We hope that you have an absolutely magical Christmas. We thank you so much for all of your support, and we will be back next week at 10 a.m. Central Time next Wednesday for another little bit of time to craft and connect with you on the Facebook Live. Merry Christmas, everyone.